Hello and welcome to the updated tutorial for Amnesia The Dark Descent Any% percent Quit Outs. The Any% percent Quit Outs tutorial is the most beginner friendly one because you are allowed to return to the main menu right here so you can make safety saves. Um, the other Any% percent category No Quit Outs is single segment. It is very difficult because you are essentially cannot make any mistakes otherwise you will lose a lot of time. Uh, I'm going to assume that you checked out the Amnesia speedrunning wiki before watching this video. So in the description there will be a link to a getting started guide. And that guide covers a lot of different things. Anything from uh, how to set up your keybinds properly to how to activate the uh, load remover uh, for live split. And any small configurations you can do to the game like having the game um, have more than just 20 auto saves. So a few things like that. It's all detailed in the uh, in the guide in the description, so check that out before watching this video. Otherwise, this video will be way too long. The last one I made ended up being several hours long. Um, this will just be a tutorial targeted towards beginners, so I won't be covering all the strats. I'll just be covering the most essential strats. And the description will have a playlist that you can check out to properly learn each individual hard trick or glitch. Like I have um, one video for the the clip in old archives, for, for example. So uh, I won't be explaining why the glitches work because I already have videos on those you can check out. But without further ado, let's just get started. Uh, no real difference between normal mode and hard mode for the any percent run. So let's just select uh, normal mode. And we're going to dialogue skip, so we're going to do it four times. And then we're going to do a quit outs buffer, meaning that during the loading back in, we will do Alt F4 again. Alt F4 in this game actually brings you to this screen and saves your game. It doesn't close the game. If I do Alt F4 on this screen, the game will close. So you only got to do it once. If you do it, if you like spam it or press it twice, then you will probably close the game. So a quit outs, buff, uh, a quit outs uh, buffer, you just press enter to select the last save. So during the loading screen, you just want to hit arrow key down twice. Enter, 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 enter. And if you listen to the audio, you could hear that it stopped um, with the main menu theme. So we've skipped two dialogues, even though we've only seen one. So you'll see me doing that a lot. That's the third one, and the fourth one. It's a little bit faster to hit load game than continue, so I try to do that. That door can be open, but it's pretty difficult to do because it fades out so quickly. I don't think I got it, but it only saves a few frames or something. Or it's more, more like a quality of life thing. Oh, I forgot to uh, add my input display. Do that real quick. Very professional tutorial, I know. But the beginning here is there's nothing extraordinary happening. There we go. So you can see I have Alt and F4 uh, in my input display. So when I'm quitting out to the main menu, uh, you can do save and exit, but Alt F4 essentially does that for you, so you don't have to hit escape first. So it saves a little bit of time. So this map has a lot of randomness to it. Um, your movement speed will be randomized. Uh, there are like f something like five, uh, roughly five places where you will get speed rolls and they can be good or bad. So you can't do anything about it. You just gotta hope that you get some good RNG. Uh, it's not, like you're usually not gonna have too much of an issue with it, but um, something to keep in mind. So also if you, exit a doorway and you jump, you can hit your head at the top there, so that can save you a little bit of time. So if you're just like jumping, um, like spamming jump, then without thinking of your surroundings, you can hit your head and it might be beneficial, and it might also be non-beneficial, depending on the situation. You can like bonk your head into a pipe and then get boosted backwards, so keep that in mind. You can get a stair boost here if you're lucky, or you can get a boost from 
pillar there, but I got really slow movement speed from the speed roll. So, <clears throat> because we're approaching this door from an angle, we can lean with Q to click it a little bit sooner. I probably should have preloaded all the maps before the tutorial, but it's fine. So, generally speaking, uh, you don't go any faster if you spam jump. Like, bunny hopping is a thing in some games. Uh, if there's nothing you can land on and you're not submerged in water, then most of the time, jumping versus just running makes no difference. There's no difference between them. There are some slowdown triggers um, where you actually gain a little bit more speed if you're airborne, but you mostly encounter those in uh, the glitchless categories. So we want to clip out here, but there's a trigger in this room that we definitely want to hit. Otherwise, our movement speed will not go back to... It will never reach its true potential. And you can always check this out with the debug menu while practicing. You can either do inspection mode, which will highlight the thing you're looking at. Or you can use draw physics debug, which will bring up all the lines. And this might be a bit demanding for your computer, depending on your graphic settings and if you're recording and streaming and whatnot. But and it's kind of hard to see because there are a lot of lines, but the box is right here. It goes across the whole room. And when you hit this box, it's pretty close to the purple goo. So the visual cue is just to look all the way down. And then hit the, uh, when your cursor hits the goo, you just go out of the room again. And when you hit that box, your movement speed will be able to get to its maximum. So if you look at player info, you can see up here, movement speed is zero because I'm standing still. Now it's 2.42, which is pretty slow. But this is the second map, so we still haven't... We're still in the tutorial, sort of. But a couple of more maps in, and the movement speed can go up to its uh, its true maximum. But only if you hit this trigger. So you just look all the way down, get to the purple goo, and turn around. And then you just spam jump up here, spam crouch, click through, pop through. Again, I have a tutorial on this. Spam jump. You won't really make this jump, so you got to catch yourself and just keep spamming jump to save yourself there. Jump around this invisible wall, jump around this visible wall, and then door dive, so you just void out, but you click the door on your way. And now we've got the first load warp. And load warping, uh, I guess I shouldn't bother explaining it really, because I should just have a, a video on it specifically, like a load warp specific video. But essentially, we're looking the correct way uh, of the door the door which is over there in that cardinal direction so we're just gonna hit alt f4 and then go to load game it's really important that you hit load game instead of continue because load warping does not work with continue so load game um again you, you want to use your arrow keys for this so arrow keys and enter and this was the auto save and this works but the reason i hit alt f4 was just to exit the game faster but you're always going to select the top save when you just hit enter. So you're going to be down, down, enter, enter, enter. And then enter will be okay. And during the loading screen, you want to hold down the left mouse button. And you don't want to move the mouse at all. If you move the mouse, you can change where you're looking. So I just moved the mouse during, <clears throat> during that loading screen. And now I'm looking this way instead of that way. So you can buffer camera adjustments on a loading screen. So that is very important to keep in mind. So when you're doing load warping, you want to hold the mouse perfectly still, and then just hold down left mouse button. Now this next part, we got six dialogues. So we can dialogue skip six times. That's one. Two. Three. Four, five, and six. So I have a rhythm to it. This will depend on how fast your computer can load the map, but uh, you definitely want to have some sort of rhythm to it. <clears throat> we can just ignore this monster. If you're fast enough, you can just close the door behind you, and he will not 
I think you also don't even need to do it. You can just crouch down here. Um, and you don't need to close the door, but it gives you some more time. Let's pop through here. Again, I have a video on this in the description. You can get a boost from that one. <clears throat> here, I like to look all the way down. And when my cursor is aligned with the door frame, I hold forward. That's a visual cue for the, the door dive right there. Just go straight forward, don't go to the right, because the cutscene trigger is a box. And now you can look to the right. So just pull this up from the water, you can jump on this box. Jump on this box, this box. You always want to be jumping if you're submerged in water, because the water slows you down. And then here, I guess I'll show off... There are multiple strats, I'll show up two strats. Um, so... Yeah, I think I'll just... I don't, I'm don't. i not gonna bother killing, I'm just gonna pause like this. So we wanna beat him... something. And there's blood in the water, but I don't even look at the water, I just look over here and I listen for the audio cue. So that's something to keep in mind, just listen while you're doing this. So first we're gonna show up the slippery clip, and we wanna have the box be as straight as possible. So that wasn't good enough. Not good enough. And if he comes back, you can, you know, try again. Like this. He's gonna go for that hand. I'm just showing, like, how the mechanics work with that one. So this should work. The uh, other strat is to beat him the remain. He starts eating it. Crouch, grab, and then spin the spin. Like it doesn't matter how quickly you spin, really. Like it's capped, so you spin like, counterclockwise. It closes if you want more time, but it's not really necessary. I'm just doing it because I'm not doing this super quickly. So you just stay in the water, grab that, and you jump on top of this box. Better not hit your head in on that thing. So for most like valves, uh, you want to spin. Uh, clockwise, but for that one it's actually counterclockwise. So here you should close the door to give yourself a little bit more time. You just want to look straight at this thing and spam, spam jump and hold forward. And holding sprint doesn't even matter. Uh, you want to try to land on this thing because you can quite easily fall out of the map like that. So as soon as you've boosted up you want to just sort of hold back or Stop holding forward. So I kind of go diagonal and try to land here because this goo can be a bit troublesome like that. Oh God. All right. So there are a bunch of stuff you can land on and that will like boost you. So be careful when jumping around on the ceiling here because these things stretch out of bounds. And then you can do. Diagonal, but I'm just gonna do it safe. Just go up here, jump, and then you can get a pretty sick boost here if you time this jump correctly on the edge here. That was decent. You can go like really fast if you get a perfect boost. Um, but the easy method is to just jump on this thing and then up here. But if you fall down here, then it can be a bit hard to boost up. You can see you're kind of like struggling to pop through here. And you can like boost up the plank, but it's kind of weird. Um, the left side isn't any much better. So what you can do is just go back and try that jump again. The safe one where you jump on that thing. And not get stuck. There we go. And then here you're gonna fall through the ceiling, and you wanna uh, jump against the wall here, just so you slow yourself down, so you don't take full damage. And for backhaul one, you wanna jump five times here: one, two, three, four, five, and then jump onto the railing. And then the boost here, I'm not good at it, so I only just try it once and then go for the backup. But you basically wanna boost up this thing, and then boost up that, and it's kind of. It's saying that this even works. 
um, yeah, you <laughs> kind of get a boost going from, I guess the boost starts here, <clears throat> and then it just continues with here, here, you just like, uh, chain it together really nicely, but this is what usually happens to me, um, I'm just gonna drink water. Alright, um, so that usually happens to me, so I just go over here and I boost in between this pillar and the banister here, and then turn my camera and land on the railing. So, an attempt for me would just look like this, and then, oh no, I didn't get it, actually I could have probably saved it. And then, that's how a lot of people prefer to do backhaul, because you can, you know, fail that five times in a row and it would have been faster to just do the backup, but, you know, you do you. Again, you're approaching the door from the side, so you want to lean, so you save some time. And in study, we have a really cool glitch uh, called the double lean glitch. And it's not actually that hard to do. Um, I'll show you, I'll show you both methods. Um, the regular method is to click in between here, but you just, you just go here, and then you look at the top of the tree. Like, looking up or down doesn't really matter, but it's just like looking... This is just like the general area you want to look. So, and on the way... And, like, you grab the rod in this room, on the table there, and then you go back to the same spot. And then you just look uh, at this paper. And again, like, looking up or down doesn't matter, so you can, like, clip by looking up somewhere. But it's just easy visual here to look at the tree. So holding sprint on left, and then holding sprint on right to pop back out. But the load warp, the, or not the load warp, but the, um, the double English is pretty cool and a little bit faster. So you want to make sure that you have the lean action bound. And in this game, I, I for the longest time thought you can only lean with Q or E. But there's actually a, a lean key, so you can use your mouse. And that is Alt by default, but it's it's actually unbound by default these days. So you want to just double check that you have that bound. And this you can do in game, uh, versus like, you know, previously you did the config thing, the notepad thing, but you can just do it here. For uh, there's one called just lean, because you have lean right and lean left, but there's just a, a default the lean key. Strafe, wait left. I'm, I can't read. Here we go. Lean. So I don't know why they did this, but yeah, you can you can do whatever. But I I really prefer left alt because we're gonna do a quit out as well. So you just click here and then click the alt the left alt key. So you have it bound. You just hold down the alt button and then you move your mouse either left or right. And the thing is, you can combine that with Q and E. So what you can do is you can hold down the, the normal lean action. And then to, we're going to lean left in this example. So you just want to tap and release Q as fast as you can. And then you want to move your mouse to the left. And as you can see, you lean way further than you're supposed to. And if you let go of the lean key, you pop back to the normal orientation. So we're going to do that here. So you're just going to hold down lean key, tap and release Q. So it's like kind of stored. And then just move your mouse all the way left until you don't go any further. And now you want to also add in F4, because Alt F4 is save and quit. Now just load back in, you don't do anything with like the load warp, you just regular load. And now your view is, crook is crooked like this. And you just go over to the painting area here, and you will be able to look through the ceiling, or uh, through the wall. And you just want to grab the rod. And it can be a bit weird to like... Because you're not standing inside the room, it's only your head. Your feet are still here, so keep that in mind. And then you just grab it, and then from here you just tap Q or E, so you reset to normal camera, and then you look towards the loading screen door, Alt F4, we're gonna load warp, hold down left mouse button, and that's it. Oh, another thing I didn't mention is that um, it doesn't always work to buffer sprint. You can buffer like WASD. But if you hold down sprint on loading screen, that may not work. So I recommend just for, for this one, I'm going to hold B and W and then I'll add in sprint when I actually can see the room again or entrance hall or not even entrance hall. This is a uh, back hall. So here, there's another thing. We're going to throw this, throw this away, close this and open this. 
to grab the potion. And as you can see, uh, it starts right away. I made a I made a quick save right before the line played, but as soon as I load back in, it just because the game tries to play this as soon as possible when you load back in. So because the thing is already there, I'm just gonna show you the alt for it as well. Like we want to dialogue skip uh, this one. But yeah, toss that away. You don't need to, but it's, I like to do that and close this, open this, and maybe maybe even crouch. Got the potion. This potion is very quick to grab. Um, now I guess I'll show both methods. Um, start with this one because you know it isn't really much of a difficulty thing. Like you want to have the chair. You hold R to rotate objects. Uh, I don't have R in my input display, but just hold down R to rotate. And I'm gonna place it like this. Uh, somewhere up here, and then hold forward and sprint, and I'll let go of the uh, chair. And if you're lucky, <laughs> it pops you through. But this clip is a bit weird, because the chair isn't the best prop. So, this can be a bit a bit bad. And if you have to retry this, then it's not faster. So that's like that's the fastest thing you can do, but it can be a bit unreliable. So the, the other strat is to get in the corner here. You want to jump, because you can actually stand here. So you want to jump from a distance like that, and then it'll pop through. I'll make a new save here and do that a couple more times. You just want to look like right in between the bouquets and the wall. And if you try to jump while you're already in here, the jump will get eaten. There's no space for you to jump. So you don't want to jump here, you want to jump from a distance. Like that. And then you don't want to click the painting. I mean, you can you can click it if you want, or like drag it just a little bit. But if this painting comes off the wall, then this flashback will play. So you don't want to do that. So you want to just click the bottle. And you can, if you're not careful, you can make it so the key. Uh, nice. Like what you just want to do this basically. You just want to break it really carefully by doing this. But the, the thing can be in the way until it properly despawns. So you can do like you can do like this to break it, or you can up and down, doesn't really matter. But if you're not careful, like you definitely don't want to fling it like this, because you can actually make the key like fall out of the map. Uh, so just do like a something like that. And click the, oh yeah, and um, you know for quit outs you would go around and click and like, click the door, but uh, no quit outs, I mean. But, you know, we want a load warp, and this is the correct cardinal direction as the door. So you just hit the key, and then you basically don't even... If you're close enough to the wall, you don't even need to move your camera. Because you'll be so close to the door, so you can just quit up with this camera angle. No. Sometimes you can hit, like, start new game and things like that, so just be careful of where your cursor is placed. So don't try to move the cursor at all during a quit out. So for eagle boost, you just want to jump up on the banister and then jump again. And you can land on the wing and get a really nice boost. Kind of a slide. I'm not getting it. There we go. That was a pretty good one. So, storage is a pretty... Pretty big map and has a lot of different routes. I'm just going to show one route, otherwise this will be way too long. You can see it's already 24 minutes long, so I'll try to speed up a bit. Um, you can close this door to give yourself more time. I highly suggest placing this box here before you pick up this. And it's pretty good to have the thing poke out. As you can see, the bookcase will make sure it doesn't fall off. So you don't need to have it like this, where it's like barely poking out. I recommend having it poke out a fair bit, so it's easy to land on top of the box. And you just wanna... Oh, and since your um, mouse wheel up and down is also bound to interact, or like one of them is bound to interact, you can see you will interact with objects if you're scrolling down or up. So be careful when trying to jump on this, otherwise you can like make it... You can move it as you're looking at the box, like that. So you definitely don't want that. So you jump on this box and then don't even look at it, just like look up here. And then you can remove this if you want to, but it doesn't really make the trick any harder or easier because uh, it doesn't have any texture, or any collision that interferes. 
So what you want to do is do a crouch jump to get on top of the shelf. So again, that is just a jump and then crouch right after. And some people, or actually, a lot of people mash for this. And I don't recommend that whatsoever. It's a very easy timing. So I highly suggest just doing a timing method for the crouch jump. And then you want to hold forward and sprint. And you want to have your cursor be on the outside of this. So you slowly like push yourself out. And just before you fall down, you will pop through because you're spamming jump all the time. And you want to turn your camera because if you don't, then you're going to... Let me get save here. Of course, you're going to pick up the drill piece. I'm just showing this off before I do so because the monster will spawn. So if you don't turn your camera, you'll fall off the map. But you just want to spam jump. And this can happen, so you just land back on the box and just try again. So as soon as I see something happening, then I uh, flip, flip my camera left. And you can do the sequence, the crouch jump into the boost in one sequence, but it's a bit more advanced. So just practice this. Uh, this is something that's pretty important to practice uh, early on, get good at. And I like to also hold in A when I'm doing this. I like tap a few times. I think I'll just do it with the thing now. Nice. Yeah. And the faster you mash, the better. Or like the faster you scroll your mouse wheel. So it can be a bit tiresome to, to, to grind if uh, you know you get tired with the mouse wheel. Uh, you want to jump on top of this. And there is a trigger, so you want to watch out for that. Um, it's pretty hard to see, there's a lot of stuff going on, but there's a box right here. Which will activate this flashback, so you want to avoid this. And there is invisible floor to stand on here. Um, when practicing storage, I recommend just like doing a lot of quick save and quick load. And uh, the draw physics so you can see where, you're, where you can stand and where you cannot stand. So I can stand here on nothing, but as soon as I go past here, I will fall down. So like, test everything to make sure that you know where you're safe and where you aren't safe. And so here, there's the flashback box, so you want to avoid landing in that area. So you can do a boost right here if you approach that the correct side. And then you avoid the box, you just kind of hop like along here. And then here, this will actually be a jump. Jump down here. Again, you can just look and see how lenient it is. Do it with the thing on. So just make your way here, avoid the box. And then here you can see I'm standing on this invisible ceiling, which will disappear now, so I gotta jump over here. So you wanna land over there somewhere. Like that. And as soon as I land here, I look at this bright thing in the distance. It's kind of hard to see, but it's like light shining through from the room over there. And this is a great visual cue to avoid another flashback trigger, because there is one um, in this room right here. As soon as you enter this room, there'll be a flashback. Just like the previous fl flashback. So you want to go around it. You know, like this. And if you look towards that thing, you'll avoid it. As you can see that the path I take, I avoid that room and just go straight here. And then here you can stand, but you cannot stand over here. So we want to jump on this beam. And there's not much room to stand on before you fall down. So what I like to do is to jump towards it and then let go of uh, sprint. You don't need to, but it's like if you're sprinting, then you have more movement and it's kind of kind of wobbly. So you just want to land here without sprint, be like safe. I, I find it to be a little bit safer, but. Maybe it might, it might be it might be a placebo. I don't know. So yeah, you'll fall down here. So that's we want to make sure to that this is safe, where you can see the wall. But this is not safe. So you pop over here, and then you just I like to walk here, and then I add I add sprint and then jump around. So I'll do the sequence like this. I think you can make this without uh, sprint. Let's jump here, but yeah. You, 
it's really rec it's recommended to hold down sprint to go a bit further. Um, this is also something you should practice, otherwise, you know, you'll do this and like, oh no, and then you die. So that's boring. Dying is very boring. Get some more boosts on the texture here. And I hate this clip with a passion. Um, I really don't know why it sometimes works and sometimes doesn't, but there's like a shape right here and these boxes in the background. I just look towards this general area uh, and then you can land on top of the barrel here to avoid fall damage. So I haven't taken any fall damage yet. Um, if I if I do this and don't land on the barrels, I will not take fall damage, but that's because I did F4 and F5. And that makes it so you... Like, that's a developer tool that makes it so fall damage um, won't happen. So if you're practicing and you want a realistic practice, which I highly recommend, then you got to do a, a quit out to the main menu. And now you can continue or load back in. And now you have fall damage again. Now the, the, the fall damage glitch has now been cleared. So now I will take fall damage if I don't land on the barrels. And you want to avoid fall damage as much as possible. Let's see, in the beginning you'll have... It's so hard to find things on this, but your health is at 100. And I think this is a 10 damage fall. I'm just going to double check. See, I really don't like this clip backing. It feels very random. But this is like the, <laughs> the only thing. You can do yeah so 90 you have 90 health now um and your health will not regen past 50 it will automatically regen from like 1 to 50 but past that it will it won't do anything more so if you're at 90 then the only way to get back to 100 is to use a potion but that's a waste because the potion heals like 40 or something so if you take 10 10 fall damage then you know that will stack on and you'll, you'll keep uh, your perfect 100 will not carry through so you want to pop through, and then as soon as you pop through, you want to turn around and land on the barrels. Which can be a bit hard to do. Especially because the clip is so unreliable. Come on. Like that. And jump through here. This is one flashback skip. And it doesn't seem like it would save that much, but it actually saves a lot of time. I uh, want to do a blind turn because like you can't see anything. It's so dark. It's so actually it's so not so dark. It's so white, but you know you just want to pan your camera to the right uh, while the white screen is happening because you can't see much, but you can still make progress. Uh, close this door to give yourself more time. I'm gonna make a save here. So you want to pick up these rods in the following order because later when you do the puzzle, this will be one, two, and three. But if you pick them up like this, like the, the first time you see them, see it like that and that, then it will be one, three, and two. So that's why we want to pick up the left one before the right one to make it easier for yourself later on. Um, I'm just going to show this without the monster chasing you because like as soon as you pick these up, the monster will come through. So you just grab the box and the more straight you grab it, the better. And then you can rotate it if you want to. But I prefer to just not even bother with rotating because I will just allow gravity to do it for me. So you just come over here and then you can just like kind of place it into next to the wall and the wall will align it. You drop it and it's like perfectly perfectly still in a good position. You want to boost up here, do a jump crouch, again time it. And then here hold sprint, spam jump and hold S. And if you hold S too early it won't work but if you add S a little bit later you'll pop through really easily. Um, so again, this is a lot of things, like I, I see people um, spam this a lot, but it's a really easy clip once you know how it works. So once you've crouch jumped here, just hold sprint, spam jump, and you'll like start to pop through. And like as soon as you jump, you just want to add S. And that's it. Uh, some people do like this uh, 360 thing. But again, like as, as long as you understand how and why it works, you don't need to do something fancy like that. You can just do the S thing I talked about. So place it down. The the, the more straight it is, the better. It doesn't, it, it doesn't have to be straight, but it helps. Like that. Now you're properly through. And then this jump is just, you know, jump, jump at the edge. It's kind of a precise jump, but not, it's not too bad. 
Now this part. So health is pretty important here. So we still have a hundred. Um, as soon as you go past here, you'll fall down. We want to land on the invisible uh, ceiling that is over here, and it, it extends. It extends really far. So you can just like go for it as soon as you land here with like uh, acute angle, like diagonal angle. Uh, some people like to have a more straight angle, so they go like this. Um, but the thing is, you don't even need to go over here and then have a, like a perfect angle like this, because as you can see, the box stretches really far out, so you can do it immediately from here if you want to. And I didn't take full damage because I have the F4, F5 glitch, but I'll reload. But basically, um, you want, the later you jump, the better, because then you can get a 10 full damage instead of a 40, I believe it is. So let me show you what I'm talking about. I'm just going to do a save and exit because now I will have fall damage. So if you look at the top here, uh, health is 100. If I jump early, I'll take 40 damage. Now my health is at 60. We want to avoid this as much as possible. Um, otherwise, you'll need to get extra potions. So if you jump later, as you can see, I have a 90. So that was a 10 fall damage. If you jump too late, of course, then you know you won't be able to get a jump input in and you'll void out. So you can make a safety save for this one if you want to. That there's an audio cue, so you can like hear the difference between a 10 fall damage jump and a 40 damage jump. And that was a 40. 40, like a really like powerful sound effect. That was a 10. Um, but I think by going at it, going at, it at a, an acute angle like this, it's a little bit easier to get the uh, the 10 full damage thing. And you can also get a short hop, so you can see you won't really go as high. As opposed to as opposed to this where I, where I jump early. You see I jumped a lot further up. So by having the acute angle, then we even get a short hop. But the short up isn't even needed to get 10 fall damage to take 10, uh, 10 fall damage. But this is something to keep in mind uh, to practice this because taking 40 fall damage here is pretty bad. You want to avoid that uh, as much as you can. So that was not a short hop, but that was still 10 10 damage. So it's a bit interesting how that works because I used to think that you needed to do a short hop, but it's fine. And to clip back in bounds here, you just want to look at that thing in the background right there um and like around this part of the the beam there's like three i think there are three uh clip spots if we look with the physics debug i think you can pop through like uh here i guess any point where these connect but i think like this one is the most popular clip spot some use like this one i think so I just approach it like this and look in the corner here and hold shift and forward and I'll eventually just pop through like that. Um, I suppose I look slightly more left of that thing. Then you want to open this door as you're falling down, grab this drill piece and then go into this room. I'll try to hurry up because I see the video is getting pretty long. Grab this drill piece. You can like grab it like this if you want to, but I don't know. It's really easy to grab the box. And then you want to look right at this wall, like this general direction, and then load work. All right. So this is a heavy door. Um, if you walk over here, you can make that door open. There's a flashback here, you want to avoid that. It's kind of hard to see, because a lot of other things in the room, but there's a box right here. And if you hit this box, then that door, that door will open. Saving you some time, because that's a heavy door, so you'll actually spend a few, couple of seconds opening it. You always want to jump if there's a flashback. Like jumping into a flashback, I should say. So here you want to use the key on the door. 
we want to skip some dialogues here. That's one. Yes. Oh, that was too slow. That was too... I didn't do a quit as buffer there. That was too... Let me see. Machine room. Three. And three. Oops. Not starting again. No. So be careful with this when you're doing runs. This is why we recommend to turn off the auto reset function for live split. Um, otherwise, you can have your run... Because it's, it's okay to... Um, if you accidentally hit start new game... It's okay to pause as soon as possible, exit, and then continue your run. This is fine. But if you have the auto reset thing on in live split, then you know as soon as you hit start new game, your splits will reset. So that's why we recommend turning that off for quit outs. So here you want to start from the right, go um Oh my god, up, down, up, down. Yeah. I'm like, for a second I was like, which which order is this? Is it down or up? They start with up, up, down, up, down, up. And if you do down, then this should not work. Yeah, but there are multiple solutions to this. Uh, with higher graphics, you can see Roman numerals here. Uh, there's another strap where you can use, like, I guess, yeah, box. You can do this, and then you can pop, I believe it's these three up. Like that. This is another solution. So that's like the, the pro strat. I guess you can't move it now. They're stuck. So you'll bring all of them down and you kind of uh, use the box to pop these three up. But it's kind of difficult. Um, so from the right, up, down, up, down, up. It's a bit more easy. So that's that puzzle. It's like uh, a puzzle per room. Jump up on the banister. And then this is the one, two, three thing I talked about earlier, how the first rod goes in here because it's a flow cycle rod, the trinity, because triangle, like it, it's pretty, you can solve it by just like reading the names. But if you picked up the rods in this order, it'll, it, in this order, it will be a one, two, three in your inventory. That's two, and that's the last one. Um, when you're holding heavy objects, you get slowed down. So if you like juggle with them, your movement speed goes up a little bit. But it can be a bit difficult to juggle efficiently. And here you can, you know, you can right click to uh, to throw them. But uh, you can also just like flick. So it's a little bit faster. If you get a boost down the stairs. Because then these will always uh, already be down there. But if you right click, you can take a lot of them to uh, you like, uh, make it all the way down the stairs. Just want to toss them over there. Grab this one. Toss it over there. This will be the one that goes in the down middle. Uh, grab coal, toss that. This one is really hard to see, but it's a pretty close coal to pick up. So you want three pieces of coal. Open this, insert all of them into the machine, or in the burner. And you don't need to close this or activate the lever. So just jump over that. This one is the bottom middle. And then depending on how well you juggle these, this will either fit there or there. And this can go out of bounds if you flick really badly, so keep that in mind. Hold this down and then load work by looking this way. So for most levers that, you know, are more than just a lever itself, you can click, usually click the body it's connected to as well. So it's pretty hard to click this because the camera is shaking. So I recommend clicking this instead. So you drag it down by clicking the body of the thing. So that also counts for um, that also counts for the the very f last lever you pull. You don't actually for, for most levers you don't need to pull the lever itself if you can interact with because you can usually interact with the thing it's connected to. So you can't interact with this thing, but you can interact with this thing. So it will make it way easier to actually click it. This is just an auto-scroller, this is where you drink water and stretch and all that. So again, prison has a lot of uh, different routes, but I'll just show up the, the easiest one. And I'll even hit a flashback trigger on purpose. I can hold forward here. Uh, I'll hit a flashback trigger on purpose so the monster will leave us alone, and then I'll skip it later. It's possible to avoid it, and it saves some time. 
but it can be a bit difficult to do, especially on slippery physics. So here you want to click somewhere over here, and then this is that really heavy object, so uh, you want to use your arrow, or you want to use the movement keys to move it. If you use the mouse, nothing will happen. So you got to move it like this, and then you add in a right click to toss it away. So right click still works, but you got to move it first with WASD. So I do uh, W, or actually I do A and S to go diagonal this way. And then R, or right click to uh, toss it over my head. Jump on top of this rock. I crouch here so I can click this rock earlier. And then I just move it somewhere over there, and then I'll open this. Because if you don't move that rock, then you'll have an issue of getting for like you'll have to like do this a couple of times to get through. Oh yeah, holding down sprint also makes this go faster. And then you want to grab this rock because even though the following flashback just ended. This thing that's happening right now in the background, this will make you go, this will make you move really, really slowly. And um, <clears throat> your movement speed doesn't go back until that is fully over. So now it's back. Like it. So you want to um, so. hold that rock to get faster movement speed. So I just click it like this, hold sprint and forward, and then I go left. As you can see, I move way faster than if I didn't hold the rock down. And then go down. And it's about done now. Grab the hammer. So here we will have a monster encounter. Um, so the thing with slippery physics is that you actually can't stun him with the chair. That's the usual strat. He will just go straight through him. Or like he will like slide. Um, so you can like keep dodging him by just going straight through him, but it's not really recommended. Um, but yeah, so basically what I wanted to say was that um, the chair strat to stun him doesn't work on slippery, because you'll just he'll just slide. He won't get stunned because he can, he can. He actually has an animation where he like stumbles. So we can't use the chair strat. Instead, we just gotta go straight past him. But it's really important that we actually give him a hug. Because then he will slash and miss. Like, he'll do the slash animation. Kind of hard to see without like a re rear view camera, but... Um, if you don't give him a hug, he won't slow down and he'll be right behind you all the time. So it's really important to get close to him, so that he stops the swing. Like that. Because now it's further away. And what we want to do is just go into the room with the chipper, and hit the flashback on purpose. So I give him a short little hug. Open the door, go inside. And the faster you can open that door and enter, the better. He was decently close. So... You want to hold, open, move in, and then you can even close the door behind you if you're, if you're smart about it. But um, for this tutorial, I'll just show open, go inside, and then purposely hit this flashback trigger. Because as you saw, he leaves you alone if you're in a flashback. So you just want to boost up the stairs, give him a bit of a hug, jump away. Open and enter as soon as possible. Grab the chipper, do a crouch grab. And he will go over here. And then, after she says, I'll never tell you. Now you can start dialing skipping. So we'll do two. There we go. And then, we'll go into this room. Uh, move the, uh, the bed away by grabbing and clicking and pushing it over there. Using right click as well. You can click either the chipper or the hammer. You don't need to combine the item because it will do that automatically for you. And just click here. Now you can also that dialogue skip in this tunnel, but it doesn't really save that much time. This is one of those that uh, barely save time, and I'll just use this um, this uh, time 
I'll just use this opportunity to explain something instead. So, uh, this left and right, you want to go right. And then over here, there are some rocks you need to clear. And it's important that you clear them in a specific order, or that, that you don't make them interfere with one, one, uh, one another. So this one, you want to just move it up and toss it away without making it touch the other two rocks. This one you can move away, it's fine. But this one, you just got to pull straight up. That's the important part here. So pull this one up. Straight up, and then click. Because then this one it will be easy to remove. Otherwise, then if you do something else, then you can have this thing going on where it's really hard for them to move them out of the way. So you just want to pull that straight up. And again, I, I click left and right all because I click it to, um, to like um, hold it, and then I use WASD, and then I right click to like boost it over. Just want to jump up the stairs. So a lot of different strats in prison in the north, but I'll show the easiest one. So jump on top of this rock, or boost on top, crouch jump here, get in this little corner, and then you boost up here. Again, I have a tutorial on this in, in the description. Uh, you want to go over here, so going left or going right doesn't really matter. It's just because you're coming from the right side, it's a few frames faster to go right. It's really easy to accidentally get boosted out like this. This part actually had uh, had flooring out of bounds, and you can probably boost up the rocks here, so it's not that big of a deal, probably. Uh, but generally speaking, you want to avoid jumping at the edge of this, because it will easily push you. So you want to jump far into the top of the ceiling here, and not like at the edge, because jumping at the edge, like here, it's kind of wobbly. You can like get pushed out. So just jump a bit late. So you land properly in. Also a bit wobbly here, but you just wanna... You don't wanna go too far left or right, just go in between here. And then door grab. This is also a bit wobbly, because I use that word a lot. Because of some textures here, but... You'll notice you get, you get pushed a little bit. So, this room is pretty interesting. Um, there's a setup right here, where if you look at the bottom of the screen, you can align the tiles, and then... You can do a boost. To uh, make it over here really easily. Like that. Oh, to avoid this flashback. You can jump over that flashback. I'll throw it up a couple more times. Like this, and then do preferably a short hop. I didn't take fall damage because I used F4, F5. But um, you can avoid the flashback like that, and then just boost up the Morg. But um, you don't need to avoid it because it's actually that strat where you avoid it is only. Um, it's actually on par or like half a second slower than dialogue skipping. So this is a pretty long dialogue, but you can just skip through it. And you don't have to worry about that trick at all. Because this trick is not beginner friendly at all, to be honest. It's it's pretty precise. You boost up this, 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 and like the wall. Like that. And then up here you can like hit this and get boosted off it's like really 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 wobbly the whole thing um and if you fail it you just enter the flashback usually and the setup is nice because you just don't move the camera and align like this it's a great setup um but for just the beginner tutorial you can just ignore it hit the flashback on purpose and then dialogue skip so it's one two Looks at my notes here, I think it's six. That's three. Yeah. Do it six times. Four. Alright, load it too fast back in. Five. And six. And now the flashback is over. And for this boost, you wanna look a little bit slightly to the left of where these two meet. So somewhere over here is pretty good. And you just want to spam jump and then move your camera so you uh, transfer your, your your boost from going up here to landing up on this ledge. And then here you can boost once more to get on top here of get on top of this platform. So let's see. And if the flashback ends right there, then it'll be a blind jump. 
But I think you can do another dialogue skip, or like another quit out to skip that sequence too. The white flash sequence. And you can actually take fall damage here if you're not careful. And also I shouldn't even be doing F4 and F5 because this is one of the maps where the game can quite easily crash. If you use F4 and F5 without going to the main menu. So for practice reasons it's recommended to go back to the main menu for a couple of maps in the run and this is one of them. Uh, it might be only when you're leaving Morgue, but not taking any chances. And it's the same thing with Morgue, really. There's a lot of flashbacks here, but if you want to, you can just power through them and dialogue skip. But it has some pretty cool out-of-bounds things, so I want to... And it's not too difficult, so I'll add it in the tutorial. Um, here you want to do W and A, so you go diagonally. And then you want to jump into the corner here while holding uh, Sprint. And you want to look like somewhere over here. You like diagonally flip into the wall. And then there are like one, let's see, one, two, three, possibly even four spots where you can boost up here. Um, I don't really find any of them to be any more consistent than the other. Some people have like a thing where they, I've got to make a save. Uh, some people have a thing where they do a timing thing. Come on. Um, so they do like, one, two, three, four. Let's see. Yeah, I don't really like the timing method. Oh, there we go. So if you look at my input display, I barely input a jump. I did very slowly. There we go. I did four jumps there. Very, like, spaced out. One, two, three. One, two, three, four. So that can help for some people. For me, I don't really find that to be a lot more consistent than just spamming. Um, but, you know, it's a bit finicky, this boost. Uh, Morgue is like one of my worst maps. Uh, but you don't want to go too far here, because then you'll hit the flashback. So it extends out of bounds. And if you go too far up, this, this would have been fall damage if I didn't use F4, F5. So that's also something to keep in mind, to not take fall damage in Morgue. Uh, it happens from time to time if you're not careful. Um, again, like if you're curious about where you can stand and where you cannot stand, just test with F4, F5 or by looking at the inspection mode. Or draw physics is probably even better. So this is the thing I can stand on and then it stops like right here. And the interesting part about the next room here is that you can clip back in bounds if you're not careful. So. Um, because door frames love to push you back in bounds. Like your character really wants to go back in bounds when you're uh, up against a door frame. So you can like clip back in right here if you're not careful. Of course, it's not happening for me right now. You can also clip in up here. You can like end up up, up there somewhere. So this is all uh, a bit scary. Like that. Um, do you want to drop that? Prefer preferably without taking full damage. So you want to let go of sprint and then just look towards the door frame. And I'm going to quit back to the main menu so I can get full damage again. Ooh, almost went back in bounds. Because if you just drop straight down, then it's a, a damage fall. So you want to like, uh, you don't want to even want to input jump. <clears throat> you just want to give it a hug so you kind of like slow yourself down just barely. And then you just walk along the edge here. And then you jump around here. But there's an invisible wall that stretches a bit further. You got the potion. This is the most this is the freest potion in the whole run. This wastes like no time to grab. And the copper tube. And then just drop down, jump up here. And then it is possible to uh, when you're trying to click back in bounce here by looking at the guy's left foot, it's possible that you just kind of get boosted forward like that. But you get you don't get back in bounds, so you just kind of fall down like this. It's hard to explain without, you know, accidentally getting... It's like random if you get it or not, basically, but it, it happens very rarely. Uh, if you look at the left, the guy's left foot, this is usually what will happen. But just keep in mind that it, it, you can get like a pop through and just fall down here. It's, it's, it is possible. So you can make a safety save right here with, you know, Alt F4 um, if you want to. But you just want to jump, spam jump, and look at the guy's left foot, basically. 
and I like to have some distance when I jump in here, just like the bookcase thing in the uh, in, um, guest room. Yeah, as you can see, it's kind of like left, right, left, right. Alright, let's see. Some people look at the, the shelf over there, but I find the left foot to be a lot better. Alright, bug save, Kappa. Come on. There we go. Uh, there's a potion right here. I crouch to easily uh, open this drawer. Now, really, really important. Um, you can bug this puzzle if you're not careful. If you use items from the inventory on this guy too quickly, then you will soft lock, and you'll have to reload the, the room and do everything again. So just do this carefully. Just one of the pieces, uh, drop it on one of the other. Uh, this piece or that piece, drop it on one, one of the other. So the important part is like clicking this guy. So you can do that part pretty quickly, but this thing, you gotta insert the syringe uh, not too fast after the thing, after you drill his head. So um, I'm gonna do that one more time actually, because I'm, I'll, I'll try to, to bug it on purpose and show you what I mean. So this you can do as fast as you'd like. I'll make a save right here. I'll double check that it works, okay. So if you use the syringe too fast, then it didn't happen that time, but like as soon as possible, uh, it can break. So don't, don't, don't do that. Instead, just wait for this to disappear and then click. Don't spam. <laughs> it's not recommended. Just do it like carefully. And then look towards this door. You can start to look towards the door before this happens. Like that. And you, you want to wait until the camera is finished shaking. So until when Daniel is finished with his, his sound, then it's safe to do a quit out. Otherwise you get a camera glitch for the rest of the run. Now don't move uh, with WASD. Um, there's a setup over there. Uh, I'll just link that in the description. But I have a setup for this that's pretty decent. And you want to just look all the way down and look right. And you just want to look at the blue line here. Some people look here. I prefer to look here. Doesn't really matter as long as like somewhere from where the blue line begins here or ends right there. Um, I prefer this one. So you just want to look there and then you don't touch your mouse at all. You can just let go of the mouse. And then you hold W and A to strafe and you run. And it's this clip spot right here, this infamous clip spot. I'm just going to save and reload. Um, so you clip by... Like, this is the wall and where you clip through. So the wall goes over here, and then it stops, and there's the, another wall that follows, and you pop in between the seam right here. Um, so this is the black texture that they can, like, look at. And basically, you want to just hold forward, and then if you go past it, you go back by holding D, and then you try again. Like that. But with the setup from up there, just do W and A. I have to get down here and then just hold W. If you don't get it, you just hold D to go back and then try again. And I actually keep holding W the whole time. So just hold W and then when you go past and you don't clip, then you just want to add in D to go back. So my cursor will pass through this point right here. And this clip is RNG. This is um, probably the most hated trick in the whole run. But if you get it first try, then it saves a lot of time. I usually get it around like... I think on average people get this within like 5 attempts. Of course, now it's being a real bitch. There we go. Um, you can also do the clip from over here, like I mentioned. Uh, I'll have a video on that in the description. But... Um, and I, I do recommend that one for beginners, to be honest, but I, I won't show it in this one because it's just a lot of explaining and the video is already so long and I explained it pretty well in my last tutorial, so I'll just check the description for that one. I'll just get pop through with this one. And then just drop down, don't jump. And then here you can take fall damage, so you keep to be careful, you just want to carefully go like left and right. 
Oh man, it's already one hour. Oh, I'll try to speed up. Jump. Grab the ladder. They don't take full damage. Jump on these. This guy is fake. Sugars is one of those maps that are really difficult. This is like where a lot of runs can, can die. But because we are allowed to make safety saves, it's not that bad. So you just want to go over here, jump without sprint, tap W to get properly into the corner. And then we can make a safety save. And you want to look at there's a pointy edge right here. Just want to look at the pointy edge or like slightly left of it. And then you hold sprint and W and A. And I recommend letting go because the clip happens so fast and there's nothing to stand on. So you just want to attempt it. And then if you don't get it, you just let go. So I'll show with a different visual cue. So like, oh, it doesn't work. You, you only do it like this. Hold, let go. Hold, let go. Hold, let go. Because if you keep holding, oh, oh, right? So you don't want to hold it for more than, more than needed. Because it's really easy to fall out of the map. So you can just hold and let go, or you can hold and then hold back towards this. So you want to like anticipate the clip. You want to know that you're standing in the perfect position and you want to know exactly where you want to look for the clip. So you know that you're going to clip. Because you need to stop as soon as possible, otherwise you fall down. This boost sucks. There's nothing, uh, there's no magic to it. Like there's no easy way of doing it. You've hit your head in the ceiling here, so you don't, so it doesn't work, but you can like go around it if you chain a lot of boosts together, but it's inconsistent. So you just got to hope that, um, you chain a lot of boosts here, so you go flying past it. Otherwise, you'll just have to keep retrying. Um, because we can try this again multiple times with the safety saves, this jump is pretty easy to jump up on here, and then jump around and land on... Nice. Uh, land on this block. Oop. And you can boost up here. This is the long boost that is... Not recommended for no quit outs, but since you can make a safety save right here, it's not that bad. Of course, you can get a really far boost up and uh, you'll take a lot of full damage. Uh, the other strat is to. I like to do this just in one go. Jump, jump, and then jump, and then here you can start boosting. And you're literally Spider Man because there's nothing to stand on, so if you don't boost well enough, then you fall out the other map. And this is actually way easier than it looks. So do you recommend? I do recommend that you practice this. You can stand here and jump from here, and you want to jump somewhere over where the mushrooms are. And if you jump, if you get a uh, too great of a boost, then that's, that's, it's actually pretty bad. So you don't want to have too many boosts going on. So just want like boost at like a medium rate almost. And once you get to the plank, you're safe. This beam will save you. So from here, just want to see if you can get some boosts up here. And jump around there. But because we can make safety saves, um, it's probably safer to just land here and then save right here. Or right, you can save multiple places and then get the long boost. And then see, that's the reason why the long boost sucks because it's RNG whether you get pushed out or not. Because if you look with fly camera and inspection mode, uh, let's see. I'll not use expansion mode, I'll use the draw physics instead. Um, it has a bunch of a bunch of pointy edges that will push you out. It's not perfectly straight, and that's the reason why the boost works. That It's like slightly curved, but you can get boosted out by these curves that allow the boost to happen too. So um, the, um, the texture giveth and the texture taketh. So there is RNG to it, that's why it's not that great. And I recommend this one instead. But since you can make safety saves, um, it's not that bad. But for no quit outs, I absolutely do not recommend this boost. <laughs> and it's a very thin line you can stand on here. Again, you can test this by quick saving, quick load, and trying to fall off. And I will do a proper safety save now so I can get full damage again. Because again, F4 and then F5 immediately without going to the main menu makes it so you disable fall damage. So you just want to try to boost up here, and see, it has a lot of things that can go wrong, which is why uh, for no quit outs, you definitely don't want to do this. And you can take damage at multiple places. And the ceiling here is not um, 
working properly, so... Yeah, big damage. We, we want to avoid this. And just, that was perfect. That was absolutely perfect. So it's really easy to go way past the height you need. And you just want to drop down, and then you can avoid damage uh, completely if, you, if you're careful about it. But it's really difficult to only get, like, some boosts and not, like, all go flying. So, yeah, it's really, really finicky. Sewers kind of sucks. Uh, but, yeah. Here you want to jump on top of this thing. There's an invisible thing here, so you want to just... You can just feel for the floor and check with the physics debug. We want to jump up here and then jump around. Otherwise, you can quite easily get boosted off the map. Again, here you want to jump like in the middle of these things because like the, the edges can boost you off. So just always land in the middle. So middle here and then land here and land here. So don't land exactly on the textures that are pointy. Pointy textures will probably push you out of bounds, or like make it make it so you slip and fall. Jump across with a full jump, click so you go back in bounds, and now you can spam jump. Like you, since b uh, jump and interact are bound to the scroll wheel, you can uh, ladder jump like that. And it is possible to take a lot of fall damage after that, but uh, it usually doesn't happen. Like you break your legs right before the loading zone, uh, like the loading commences. So just go north. This clip kind of sucks. Uh, you can make a safety save if you want to, but it's not that bad because you auto save right there. You want to pop through slightly to the left of the middle of the beam. You got a spam crouch to pop through, and uh, yeah, it's not a not a fun one really. And you can like have your head pop through, but the rest of your body isn't through, so you can get fooled and you like start to look right and then you actually fall down because you weren't properly out of bounds. You were like halfway out of bounds. Um, this thing, just be like somewhere in the middle of this, this general area, and you want to look towards this beam. You can see the, the beam is like, he or like, that isn't even a beam, but like, this beam, that beam, that beam, it just continues this pattern. The third one in the distance, the small one, you want to look towards that one, you want to make sure that you can see just a little bit of it, but not too much. So right now, um... This is one of the maps where you want to make a save and go back to the main menu, otherwise the game can crash. Um, and then, like, obviously, this is one of the reasons why F4 and F5 isn't allowed for speedruns. It is a developer tool, but it also makes the game crash, and you just simply fall damage. There's lots of lots of reasons why. Um, but for practice, I recommend doing a save and exit with, F, with Alt F4. If you can see too much of this thing, then this trick will not work, because you're going to... Avoid fall damage. It's actually pretty crazy, but you can avoid fall damage here by strafing far enough left. So if you go far enough right, massive fall damage. Uh, you, we probably went from like 80 or something to 10, yeah. Um, but if, if just a little bit of it is showing like this, you can make it so you absorb the, da the fall damage. This thing saves you from fall damage. Because this texture is pointing out of bounds here, you can you can land on it on it at an angle, and it kind of it's like a parachute in this example. So it's amazing to practice. Like it's it's amazing that this thing works, and you should practice this so you don't take massive amounts of damage. And the visual cue is to look for that thing, so you land like right here instead of landing here where the thing doesn't save you. And if you go too far left, then that won't work either. So. If you want to get every single potion, if you really want to, you could, you know, just go really far left like that. Actually, I didn't take that much damage from that. That was interesting. I took a, a 40 damage, but um, not the the most damage you can that I that you can take. And then you can like go over here. So that's an interesting strat I just found on the spot. But the best thing would be to avoid um, damage as much as possible because grabbing potions does waste time. And it wastes more time than you might think. So have this thing only be showing a little bit, and then just hold forward and sprint. The, f the thing will save you. Now there's plenty of floor to stand on, so you won't get pushed out of bounds. Like, uh, out of the map. Uh, then just jump here. These jumps can be a little bit tricky if you're not used to jumping around. So you can make a safety save if you want to. But you can, like, stand on this. Again, you want to jump around like this. This is safe to stand on. And now here, really interestingly, so you might think that you can't stand here, but 
you can. This whole invisible floor extends here. So if I go further right than this point, I will fall down. But you can actually stand here, no problem. So you don't need to jump here. And in fact, you might get pushed by this or, or this edge right here if you jump. So just walk across here uh, by hugging the left. There's no danger. And then you want to boost up this thing. And then you want to turn right. You don't want to land on these things whatsoever. So jump in between them. There's also one here. Jump here. Jump here. And I'll make a save to save because I'll show up two strats. Um... You can jump around this, and this jump, I had a lot of trouble with this jump when I was learning the game. Like, this was like the bane of my existence, this jump. And back when I learned the game, there was only no quit out single segment, so... I had that happen, and I had to start back in the beginning of the game. Um, so you can either do a door dive and like, lick the door, or you can... Let's see, or you can land on top of the door frame and then drop down like this, and then click the door. And you won't take any damage because it's just not high enough to take damage so you have two options there but the most beginner friendly one would be to go over here get in this little corner and then crouch and hold forward and you'll pop through however you will take 10 damage it's pretty hard to avoid it i'm not sure if it's even possible to avoid it uh, i don't think so i think this might be a forced 10 damage although maybe you could with amazing reaction time, uh, boost against something as you're falling down to avoid it. But I, I, I sadly think this 10 damage is unavoidable. But we want to grab this potion later anyway, so you can do that and grab this potion and then enter the, the next area. So that is the easiest thing, but you will take 10 damage, so keep that in mind um, depending on like how your health is. Um, of course, you're not allowed to actually use this for the speedruns because this is the developer debug toolbar. So you'll have to just look at this, but this doesn't say much because this only has four stages. Um, but yeah, if you know that you're low on health, then you may want to do this jump around instead. Where you click the door. But it can be a bit tricky, so I'll, I'll give you some options there when you want to practice. Just test things out and see what works best for you. You want to jump down with a little bit of a left and right angle, but you get stuck in the ceiling quite easily. Alright, so I think the beginning of the run has more to explain than the later parts of the run, so the tutorial is not going to be that much longer now, so don't worry about it. Uh, you can get boosted by the edges here. If you jump and have a nice angle, you kind of land there, and you, then you can bunny hop. So uh, I guess I'll show that up one more time quickly. So you just want to jump and then land there. And you can get a really insane boost if you're good enough. but Or you can just get a small one like that. I'm not really good at those. Uh, the goal is to enter this room before Daniel says how. That means you had a decent, a decent movement over here. Um, there's a potion right here. I want to pick this up. Or, or not, you know, depending on how elite you feel like you are. Um, so, interesting thing, you can actually not jump up on this, because this texture just does not align with the correct height uh, words. So, it goes further up. But you can jump on this thing, and then you can jump up here. So, if you're, like, in this corner wondering why you're stuck, then you gotta jump up on this thing, and then up here. So, this you can jump on. Uh, I'd come from here because I always get the potion, so I just kind of land on this, and then this, and then this. Land on this, and here. Uh, you can avoid this, and that, and that that avoids the whole jump scare thing right there. So you want to grab, like crouch, and grab the piece, and then just look somewhere over here because this is the level door. I'm going to load warp out, because you save some backtracking. And then do a quick 180 and click the door. Go back inside. And then just make your way straight forward. And the interesting thing here is you don't want to jump over the, the railing. Because there's a trigger over here that makes it so this monster responds. But it, there's a trigger right here that makes that monster spawn instead. So don't jump over the railing, just go here and listen. 
Ah, there, there we go. There he spawned. He spawned way over there. Uh, otherwise, you would have a monster spawn right here, which we, you definitely don't want. Because uh, the Brute will... Unless you have 100 health, he will one-shot you. I think he does 90 damage. So, um... Yeah, come into this room, you grab the second orb piece. I jump and crouch. So I come over here, jump and crouch and grab. I'll jump back over. And then the next part is over here. You wanna see if you can get like a couple of edge boosts right here. I'm really bad at them today. Uh, here you can quite easily follow the map, so just take your time, make sure you're properly on this, then go across. Um, there's a clip right here. I'll just do it once. I won't really talk about it. I'll just show it really quickly. Because the beginner-friendly thing is way better. Um, but you can do this clip. And then you can jump around or look down and pop through there by jumping. And then same thing over here. You, except here you don't need to jump. You just pop through really easily. Jump around. Turn around. S. And uh, don't even need to hold sprint. Because if your movement speed... Movement speed is higher with W than S, so you can quite easily pop back in bounds if you do that. Um, but yeah, and then you do some more jumps out of bounds. But that whole sequence is not really beginner friendly, and in fact, because of dialogue skipping, it's not even the optimal strat anymore. It's faster to go in bounds and just dialogue skip all the way through. Um, so, it's in this example, like when you go hit the monster spawns over there. But the flashback in here will make it so he fucks off. So skipping this dialogue is faster than all that bound stuff for any percent quit outs. Uh, and there are, let's see, my, my notes. Uh, there's five. Five to skip. One, two, three. If you see that, load game is already selected, because I hit arrow key down twice on the loading screen after the audio cue. So there are some small time saves you can... So there, are, after the audio, I hit down. Or, no, this is the last one. Down, down. So then you can just spam enter. So lots of, like, small uh, optimizations like that. With the quitouts buffer and the, the buffering. So I crouch and grab the orb, and then this is the correct way to look for the load warp. So Alt F4, load warp, and hold left mouse button, and you click the door. And then instantly do a load warp again, because the door is over there. So you just skip past this area. And now we're in Nave. So if you didn't grab the potion by going down here, like if you if you went did the door dive instead, then grab the potion. If not, you already did that. And Nave is really, really tricky. Nave has a lot of different stuff. Uh, I won't really go into detail, because I'll just... Uh, um, that, that's the thing with the tutorial, I said that I'll just not say... I'll just shut up and do stuff, and then I'll have you guys look at the tutorial in the description. But I ended up still explaining stuff, so... But for, for this one, I'll just make sure to link the Nave tutorial instead, because there's a lot of different stuff you can do in Nave. But get in the corner, look here. This is the one I prefer. Where you just jump instantly. So again, like letting go, like sewers to not fall down. Boost up, try to not go too far up, otherwise you take fall damage. Boost up here. It's a little bit tricky, but once you're up, you're good. Stand here, jump here. Invisible ceiling. By looking slightly left of the center, you pop through pretty easily. Like that. And then here you can do a boost here. That saves a little bit of time, but to be honest, you can just go over here and over here, which is way easier. Because you can actually fall in between here if you go for the fast boost and void out. Alright, so transept. Uh, there's a bunch of different routes you can take, but uh, I'll just show this one where you boost up here. And then just go along the edge. This is a flashback you want to avoid, and you can just barely avoid it by going along the right edge here. So you can look at that with the debug thing. You can see that it's like, it's that wall right here. And it just barely doesn't touch the, the circle hitbox that you are. And it's not very long, so you can go off the pipe pretty early. 
Or we can just ride the pipe all the way, it doesn't matter. Enter through here. Just want to follow the path. Open this heavy door. All the doors are heavy, so keep that in mind. Uh, the, this piece can be a bit awkward to grab, so I recommend crouching and grabbing at the top part. I'm just going to speed this up. Okay, so you can get a boost right here at the edge, like that. And then <clears throat> another heavy door, another, another corridor. Heavy door. Um, the ore piece inside here, you can actually... You can open and click it like this, of course, like grab it normally. Or you can click it through this thing if you know where it is. And then for this, you can either just do a strafe clip by W and A. Pop through. Or you can do a setup where you like look at the, the green square right here. And then let's let go of uh, W after a few seconds. Um, you won't fall down here. It's really hard. It's possible, but really, really unlikely to fall down. And then here you can just barely, barely scoot your way along the edge. You can see how my player model is just like barely able to, to stay here. Really, really scary stuff. Um, but it's actually safer to just jump like like this. Of course, I say that and fail. Um, I wasn't jumping with the correct angle. But um, jumping this way is actually safer because... Um, I've done this as careful as I can and like scoot it along like this and I've still had it fail. So there's no guarantee that it will work when you're doing this, but I haven't failed it if you jump over there because the interesting thing, you can see how this the circle is just like barely on this thing. But the further left you go, you can see now more of the square is standing on this thing. So it's actually, you have more stuff to land on over here than if you're trying to do it over there. So it is actually way safer to just... You can make a safe to save though, if you want to. But it's safer to jump over here if you... Of course, don't, don't jump too far left like an idiot like that. Um, but you just... Close to the pillar, jump like that. Let me do it from here. Like that. And then the same thing here, but I have never fallen in this spot. So you just want to hug along the, the edge, along the edge. Boost up this thing. And this will be massive fall damage if I <laughs> did not do F4, F5. So again, you know, F4, F5 disabling fall damage. Which is why it's not allowed for runs. Uh, you want to hug this thing as you're falling down to not take fall damage. That might have still been fall damage because I'm... I should be doing this a lot so that I can actually demonstrate whether I would have taken fall damage or not. Because uh, hitting F5, like hitting F5 without going back to the main menu, like F4 and then F5 without going to the main menu makes it so fall damage isn't working, so I do that a lot in the tutorial, but I shouldn't really be doing it because it's important to show what you can take fall damage from. Anyway, remove this and then just click the orb. And, you know, based on the music, you've already picked up all the orbs, so you just want to look one in that room, one in that room, and one in this room. So you want to look towards load door, do a load warp. And now it's time for Nave 2. And the camera will shake a lot in this area. It will shake a lot. And you're trying to like line up this pixel jump. And it's like the game does that in the meantime. So this is like the Tetris piece that I look at. As you can see, it's like sort of missing a piece right here. I like to place my cursor in the in between this square and this square so it's like so it's like covering up this space right here that's what i look at i find that visual cue to be pretty pretty nice so i don't place it inside like now i'm filling the piece but i place it like in the middle of that and the next one so i'm gonna do a safe like a proper safety save because this map can crash uh, if i just do f4 and f5 so you just want to hold uh, sprint and forward, and as soon as you clip through, you want to... Nice. A little bit more left. Oh. Then you want to jump and land on this edge. If you don't... If you don't turn your camera, you'll just pop through and fall down.
it's actually a pretty lenient jump. But a lot of people, when they do this, uh, like I see a lot of new players, they they attempt this. They have a really they have the angle, and then they do this. They get so scared that they're gonna fall out of the map, so they turn the camera way too early. But you need to allow for the clip to happen and then jump afterwards. So the most common mistake is not to fail the, um, the lineup, uh, actually. It's that they jump too early, like before they even do the clip. All right, enough of that. Let's clip, jump through. So it's safe to land here. You can just boost up here if you're lucky. You can get like a side boost and they can continue with these two. This boost is kind of dumb. Uh, doesn't always work. And then, this is not beginner friendly really, but I'll, I'll, it's so cool, I want to show it off still. You can like land here, and get a boost. Oh man, because you can the, you can stand on floor here, out of bounds. Like this floor extends out of bounds, so it's actually a bit safer than you might think. And from that boost, if you're like get a really nice one you can like that you can get a boost like that and you you either don't take damage or it's 10 damage it's never more um so you like you get boosted off of you see like this thing it's that thing it's just oh yeah i can see it right here like now it's gone but the texture of this you like basically land on this thing like the, the space right here and then you boost forward and uh, it it's the fastest thing you can do and it also makes it so you usually don't take damage um but the safe thing is to just go around like as soon as you make it up here you just want to again don't don't jump on these but just in between and then you want to go down here and um you don't want to jump you just want to run off and then see if you can like spam jump as you're falling down to avoid fall damage <clears throat> to avoid fall damage nobody heard the voice crack um Sometimes I do jump first, but then I like need to make sure that I don't okay, I didn't take full damage here. There's lots of like crevices you can land on there. And here you just want to look towards I like to look towards the left chain. Some just look towards the staircase. This clip is like pretty whatever, like <laughs> sometimes it can happen. The clip can work instantly, other times you can have a lot of trouble with it, so it's just one of those clips that uh, will be a bit unreliable in terms of consistency of like how quickly it happens. Like there I jump to uh, make my fall. I do slow down my, my fall there. So some people look like this way, but I pref I have a more consistency of like looking more toward the chain. And it just it just works sometimes. And if your health... Oh, I forgot to say this like way earlier in the tutorial, but if your health is below zero, or below zero, if it's below 50, um, my health is like 90. But if it's below 50, where it says a wound is bleeding quite bad badly, that means your movement speed will be like heavily um, uh, altered, you'll, you'll move very slowly, and that makes it so a lot of the clips in the run don't work. So that's something I probably should have mentioned like from the get go. But yeah, this clip, I think it can work below fifty, but you know you're gonna have a lot more difficult time doing it. Here, just want to click and open, and this thing will like fly open. Like you can do this and then open, but it's better to just. Leave this be and just wait for that to fully open. If that makes sense. So you can't open that gate as quickly as a door because you're gonna wait for that hatch to also go off. I'm still on pace to uh, making this tutorial shorter than the last one, but uh, yeah, a bit lengthy because there's a lot of technical stuff to explain. When you see green turn around, just like the purple in old archives in the beginning of the run, because this is a scripted death. And this scripted death only happens when you have six orb pieces. So if you didn't get knocked out, then that means you have less than six orb pieces. And you missed an orb somewhere. So I'm actually going to show off the faster strat here because I don't find it to be that difficult. It's just that people might not know why it works. So I'm going to explain why it works and then we're all good. So you can't jump until you're like properly... Uh, done with like the whole fainting thing here like waking up from the, the faint um you can wiggle this diagonally like approach it diagonally and then wiggle your mouse left and right 
Uh, or you can jump on top of this. Crouch jump with sprint. I forgot to do that. And then now this will break by just you holding forward. You're not holding sprint, you're just holding forward. And as soon as this pops off, it's going to pop off in this diagonal direction. So if you imagine that this bar breaks off and it's going to land, it's going to be like this in front of your face. So you want to look somewhere over here to grab it instantly. See that? It happens really quickly, so you might need to watch that in like slow motion. But that's how it falls. It falls down like diagonally like that. So you can just spam click to grab it as soon as you break it, because you break it by just holding forward. And it's not actually that difficult, it's just you need to know where it lands, because if you don't, you don't get it, then you gotta click it from here, and it can actually roll quite far. You can roll so far that you can't reach it. I like, see it's still rolling, and now I can't reach it anymore. That's the only downside, but as long as you know where it pops, like how it falls, then it's fine. But the safe thing is to just do this, but it, it, it's way slower of course. Then grab it, jump crouch through. Practice the timing for this. Um, you want to let go of sprint as soon as you've done the jump here. And then just... The jump crouch timing is the, the same as any other jump crouch. Here you want to insert the rod, and you can bend it normally. But it's better to just pick up the chair and then just drag it across like that. To bend it with the chair, and then pick up the key. And your movement speed is... or your health is pretty low when you wake up. It's at 40. And as you can see, it goes up to 50. And because I've spent so long explaining stuff, it's going to be 50 in a second. There. So now you won't have the wound quitting, uh, the the wound bleeding quite so badly, and your movement speed is back to you know fast, the the usual. But it is recommended to actually use a potion so you get back up to 50 plus um, when you use this key on the door. So you would use a potion and then a key on the door. My health was already good now, because I spent so long explaining stuff, but that's what you want to do if you have uh, more than one potion, preferably three. Here, jump in the corner to open the door. I guess I'll just show that off one more time, and I'll do the hard thing too. So my health is now below 50. So now, use a potion right here. I have five. If I had two potions, I would not do it. Uh, I like to have at least two potions from here on out. A lot of stuff can go wrong, so it's nice to have a couple. So I jump in the corner here, and then grab the door and, and open the door. And the door is actually so powerful to push everything away. Another thing you can do is to do it like that, and then jump around. Um, but I think it's easier to just get in the corner and grab the door. And there's a thing chasing you. Uh, left or right doesn't really matter, but since you're coming from the right, just like in uh, Prison North, you want to go right. And then this rock slide will happen, so this path is open. If you go left, then you have to go right, like the rock slide would have been here. And then here you want to try to avoid dining in the water, because the water slows you down. So you can jump around the pillars like this. Oh, and you can actually boost back up, but you'll probably just end up taking fall damage. Like, oh. I could have taken full damage but then on the other side. But yeah, you don't want to boost back up, you just want to jump around each, like, a pillar. And if you land in the water, then it's like, okay, whatever, my feet got wet. So just spam jump up the stairs and go back to Nave. We're now, we'll now be in Nave Redux. And this is the final, the final version of Nave. Just want to jump here, open the door as fast as you can. Go through here, run up on the rope, and then jump. Nice RNG. You can crouch or just wiggle yourself left to avoid the, the beam there. Um, I'll do a proper save so I have fall damage. Alright, so you want to just... Don't jump, just run off. Land on this. Do lots of small WASD movements to make sure that you... You know, don't go too far, and then you can, again, don't jump, you just want to run off and land on, land on this, then you land on the beam right here, and then you land on the torch without the actual thing. 
And then RNG if you get hit by the goo. And then jump over the barrel and go through. So I'll show that it, uh, in real time. So you can see me shifting between sprints on and off. Jump over the barrel, jump over the planks that can interfere slightly. Jump over the railing, but you want to land on the railing. And then land on the box, otherwise you take damage. Go all the way down. But avoid taking fall. Because this is also RNG today. Yep. Just like that. Uh, any instance of goo like that, uh, you want to go past it if you can, so you don't have a chance of taking damage. Open this. You can actually soft lock here by this goo boosting you into the corner here, so that's cool. Uh, but you can reload in 90% quit outs. That usually doesn't happen though. It's you'll you like need to be hugging the wall for it to happen. All right, chancel two. You can get a small boost here by jumping here. And like that little piece will make you slide. Just want to go straight for the end. You don't need to, to break the machine. So if you look up here, um, if you look up here, you can see that it's kind of it has a like distortion effect. That means that my health is below 50. You can quite easily see that by looking at like the void. So I want to take a potion. You always want your health to be above 50. So now it should be at like 60 or 70. 73. I think this goo can actually damage you, so I try to avoid it as much as possible, like jump here to get away from it. Um, this clip is ridiculously easy, you just want to hold forward at an angle, you don't even need to sprint. And then here you jump on top of this, then you jump on top of this, go as far up as you can. And then you don't want to jump into the corner right here, that will not work. You gotta choose either this side or that side. So because you're already standing here, I prefer to boost up this side and then go around. So you want to boost up here, like that, as opposed to uh, boosting, just like show you, you don't want to do this, because this is not as consistent, going at it diagonally like that. So you want to jump up on this side, like that, and then boost up here, and then this jump can be a bit tricky. You can take fall damage from this, uh, which is a bit stupid. I guess I'll do a proper save to save to show that. And you just want to look all the way down, and as soon as your cursor passes this area, you want to jump. And you'll just barely make it, you gotta jump again. But a lot of the time I'll jump too early, and uh, I'll end up falling down. And taking 10 damage, and then boosting back up. Attempting it again, taking 10 damage. You know, this is really bad because you can keep taking fall damage until you have your low health. Eventually, if your health is too low, you can't make the jump. You'll have to boost up this thing instead. And this boost is pretty stupid. Um, so you definitely want to avoid this as much as possible. But there we go, finally got it. So that is the backup if you have below 50 health. You can also just, you know, jump too late and nothing happens. So this jump needs to be practiced. And then here, this is the final jump around. You can make a save to save if you want to. Uh, if your health is really low, I mean this jump you can make with uh, like 10 health, like it doesn't matter. But you can also get a boost right here. But I don't recommend this boost because it's really random. Uh, it's one of those boosts that are really inconsistent. But if you really don't want to do the jump, you can boost up this pillar. But yeah, there we go. But you'll probably take, I took 50 damage from, or 40 damage from that, so I don't really recommend it. Um, instead, you can just make a safety save right here, and then it's just like the final jump around here. And you gotta practice that to make sure you're good at, good at uh, those jump arounds. So in Nave, in this map, there's a couple of places where you do that kind of jump around the corner, and it's pretty important to, to get it. And again, you should check out draw physics so you can see how much leniency you have where you can stand. And like when when the floor ends before you jump around right there, uh, I guess you'll be standing on yeah. This is the floor you'll be standing on right here. So you want to jump from this piece on the floor to this piece right here. So always check stuff in draw physics if you're curious about how much leniency there is. And then you take ten damage. Uh, 
It is possible to avoid 10 damage on that jump, but it's not very likely. And then here you would just use a potion if you need it, but I actually have enough health to do the clip. A few cuts and bruises is perfectly fine. So the final clip. Um, yeah, I have a save right here, like auto save. So if you if you have no potions left, and your health is below 50, where it says a wound is, a wound is bleeding quite ban badly or like barely conscious, um, then you want to go down the stairs. And as soon as you hear that, you go back. And this thing will kill you. And when you respawn, you'll respawn at the, I believe, the bottom of the stairs. And you'll have above 50 health. Yeah, you'll respawn here. And you can pull down the lever. And all is good. Because the clip right here only works if you your health is 50 or more. If it's 49 or less, then it doesn't work. So if you have no potions and your health is low, you want to purposely uh, death warp. There, on that sound cue, you turn around. But if your health is good, you just want to keep going. And then here, again, you can... The camera will shake a lot, so it's difficult to click the lever. You just want to click the body. You can interact with... And the monster will not come through. So instead of... Um, clicking the lever, you can click the body. It will make this a lot easier. And you can click it while you're running as well. The camera will shake a lot, which will make the next clip a little bit iffy. Not too bad, because you're still just like, it's not a precise thing. So you click and go down as you're moving past it, and you can hear the sound effect. So the final clip. This one, you want to turn your camera, and you want to look clockwise, like this. And you will pop through eventually. And there isn't like a consistent setup for this, unfortunately, so this is the final clip in the run. And it's not like, it's not as bad as like, uh, Sister Entrance 2 before Sewers, where, you know, you look all the way down and just kind of... Remember that clip? It's not that bad. It's nothing like that. But you want to make sure that you have a, a good, um, kind of, uh, a good cue and like a, a good technique, I mean, a good technique. So, the camera will shake a lot, it's really hard for me to explain it, but you want to do small clockwise circles. Because um, the reason why this clip works is that you clip from left to right. So you look left and then you look right. And that motion of going from left to right, that's what makes a clip. So by going, by doing this, you're constantly going left and then right. And that's what I recommend. And you, you look somewhere in the middle of it. It's like, I think the clip is slightly right of the middle. So you, you just like, by doing this, you go from here to here, here to here, here to here. So you just keep trying that over and over again. That was a really bad one. Let's see. I'll do a bit uh, bigger circles. Yeah, this can happen at the end of your run, and you don't want this to happen. So you don't want you do want to practice this as much as as much as possible. I haven't practiced this in a very long time, as you can see. And yeah, you can like get um, you know, we'll kind of tease the clip, and then it won't happen. But yeah, small clockwise circular movements in the middle. And you usually clip within 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 five seconds, like either insta clip or five seconds. It usually doesn't go on for much longer than that, so you don't have to worry about it. But do practice it. So these pillars, they're too heavy to move with the mouse. You gotta use WASD. And like before, we learned that if you add in a right click, you can push it over faster. So you just want to grab it, hold A, and then right-click to push it over quickly. And then this thing will always fall in that direction. It's a very, like... You can't make this prop move at all. The way you can do is you can stand under it so it pushes you. And then you can jump, so you get a boost from it. You get a boost from that thing pushing your head. Oh, and I also hold uh, Sprint. Like that. And this one pushes forward. You can get a small boost here. Yeah, forward and backwards. So uh, that can happen. But usually, uh, if you're fast enough with the whole sequence, then, like, as long as you get the boost there, then you can't make this go by any faster because you gotta wait for the voice line. Like, this voice line needs to finish before 
uh, timing will end. So if you push this thing over and he's still on this voice line, it doesn't even matter. But this thing pushes that way. And that's the run. Under two hours, let's go. That's good, that's good. <laughs> um, yeah, you can like do some fun stuff in the credits where you can like a lot out of the map and stuff like that, but I, I think I'll just, just end the tutorial as soon as I can, basically. The second map is a bit more fun. So you can't open this, but I believe it's like a fake wall. It's an, it's the next map. You can just hold back. And if you're fast enough, you can quite easily fall out of the map right here, just for fun. And all the maps here are connected. The orb chamber map with the, this end credits map. And it's kind of funny because Daniel says, like, it was his greatest triumph and he never looked back. And the first thing you do if you want to fall out of the map is to look backwards. And then you can do this silly thing where you can prop fling with a chair. Oh my god, that was a really good attempt. If you have a lot of speed, uh, like, if you throw the chair at a lot of speed going into this rock side, you can break it. But it's pretty uh, difficult to get. And you have, like, two or three attempts before the credits begin to play. Um, check out the Amnesia speedrunning wiki, the Amnesia, or like the HPL speedrunning Discord, uh, HPL games speedrunning. So it's all of the horror horror games from uh, fictional games. So Penumbra, like the Penumbra series, the Amnesia series, um, and Soma. So all grouped in in a very nice, comfortable Discord server where a lot of people are interested in giving you tips and helping you set up, um, you know, live split the game graphic settings, a bunch of different things. So uh, you can ask questions in the comment section of this video and I'll be trying to answer your questions. But if you ask in the Discord, then, you know, you can get help from a lot more people. So I recommend checking out the Discord server. And uh, yeah, not much else to say. Good luck, have fun. This was any percent quit else, the beginner friendly tutorial updated. Um, there's a lot more stuff you can do if you want to save as, much, as many seconds and as many frames as possible, if you check out this guy called ATDD Proof, he does the most insane setups, like the most insane uh, strats, I mean, for every single map. So his no quit outs run is really impressive to watch, because especially in that category, because you can't make safety saves. So there's a lot of uh, insane stuff you can see by watching the top players like that. And um, there are Vortrix also on YouTube has a lot of cool segmented videos um, and occasionally you see some task stuff posted in the discord by uh, Saragay and uh, it's really cool to see how far this game can be pushed especially when you just watch the uh, you know beginner friend tutorial where you can make safety saves and have setups and all that but watch these guys just go ham it's pretty interesting uh, anyway I'll sign off here make sure the tutorial isn't too long it's still going to be a long tutorial, because the game is like 30 minutes and I do want to stop and explain some stuff. So... But I think this is way better than like 3 hours. I think the last tutorial I did was like almost 3 hours long, so that's a bit... a bit lengthy. Anyways, thank you for watching. Uh, good luck and have fun.